So the last step for our WebRTC multi-party application is to be able to exchange ICE candidates as shown in the B figure. So in this lesson, we will add the server-side code for endpoints to be able to receive and process ICE candidates. So let's jump into it. So in our server.js file, we will add the add ICE candidate function. So I'm going to copy this. We'll go near the public road. We will create the function. Get rid of the messages because we don't need it. We don't need, we don't need them here. I'm going to create a callback. Okay, first thing we're going to do is get the user from the list of participants. So we will get the room first, sockets, adapter, rooms, and the room name. Then we're going to get the participants and the one with the ID of the socket is our user. So if the user already exists, uh, oops, if users different from null, then let's create the candidate. Oh, but I think I'm going to have a conflict here so I'm gonna change the name of the of the parameter and let's use this one for a better understanding so candidate will be equal to some functions that we will have to use with currento which is currento dot register dot complex types and ice candidate just to make sure that we're using the right format so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna add as a parameter the ice candidate that we have received. Now let's uh, check if the sender and the receiver are in the same. So we're going to use this, the user ID that we, we received and the user that ID. Um, just to make things clear here, because this could be confusing, let's rename the parameter here as sender ID, which means that this is the user that will be that will send the the media streams to the user ID. So with that clear, let's check if the user already has uh, an outgoing media. And if so, we will get that outgoing endpoint and gonna call the add ice candidate method to process the candidate. And if doesn't exist then we will add it to the ice candidate queue variable that we defined before this in the event that the candidate exchange begins before creating the outgoing webrtc endpoint so we will call push here to add the candidate to that queue now this in the event that the user that uh, send and the user that receives the streams are the same. Now let's go to the other case in which we will first make sure that the incoming WebRTC endpoint already exists. So we will add another if here in which we make sure that the incoming media for the sender ID already exists. If it does, we will simply call the endpoint with the sender ID and same as before, use the ice ID candidate function passing the candidate as a parameter. And if it doesn't exist, same as before, we will add the candidate to the ice candidate queues but we first need to do something in here and that is because uh in this in, in in this case we will have we will have to make sure that that the array is already initialized so <clears throat> we will add an if here 
if the ice candidate queue for the sender ID doesn't exist, we will initialize it. Sender ID equal to an empty array. And after that, only after that, we will add the candidate to the queue. So sender ID and then push the candidate. So after this, uh, let's call the callback without errors. Now, if <clears throat> something happened with our user, we will add an else here that will throw an error. So we're going to call the callback with a new error, telling that um, add ice candidate uh, failed that will make it now we need to add a few lines to the client that will process the ice candidate that the server sends so we need to create the add I, the add ice candidate function so I'm gonna copy this and here down here let's create a function function Add ice candidate. Let's get rid of the messages. And just one line here to get uh, the user from the list of participants, user ID. The RTC peer object, we will call the add ice candidate function and we will add the received candidate. Okay, so now we're ready to test our application. But before, let's make sure that our Corento instance is running. To do so, we will type the command docker run. We will, uh, we will add the flag dash D and also the flag P to specify the ports that we want to expose, which will be 8888 on the host and 8888 on the container. We will set also a name which will be Corento and now let's specify the image which is Corento slash Corento media server. Okay so now we can run the app by Type in npm start. Now let's move to a browser and let's open a couple of tabs localhost 3000 and also localhost 3000. Let's put the name here. Yeah, this is going to be user1 in the room webrtc training. Click enter and we have first image, now let's do the same here, user2 in the room WebRTC uh, training and we have established a call. Now let's try with another tab same, user3 on WebRTC training and as you can see we have a multi-party call okay let's close this and let's also stop the app so now you have the basics of WebRTC development Congratulations, you are ready to start working with this awesome technology. Feel free to reach me if you have any doubt. But before start creating the next big thing in WebRTC, why don't you challenge yourself by seeing if you can add some sort of authentication to secure your app. You can use, for example, Firebase for managing users. However, that's an optional uh, challenge. Now, the thing you'll probably find more interesting 
is playing around with the media server. So uh, while, while using Currento, see if you can add a filter endpoint to manipulate the streams that users send to each other. Uh, take this example as a reference. So if you go to https uh, slash doc dash Corento dot read the docs uh, dot io then you go to the English language uh, in the 6.9.0 uh, version in the tutorials and node and finally tutorial uh, magic mirror dot html So follow the instructions in here and uh, send me a short video showing the application running and explaining the flow. So that's it for this course. Once again, congratulations. And as a wise man said once, with great power comes great responsibility.